What's up guys, Sila here and I am back with another video and this time we're going to be taking a look at my 1 to 120 leveling route as recently I did one of my marathon streams and a few people were wondering what my route was. If you're not familiar with my leveling streams, I basically go from level 1 to whatever the current max level is in one sitting. You know, we take breaks, we try and keep it healthy, but I don't take sleep. So if it takes me 30 hours, if it takes me 50 hours, we just crank on and get it done. And I've done these throughout Mr. Pandaria, World of the Draenor, Legion, and now in BFA. And this one ended up taking me 33 hours, which I'm not really happy with the time, but there were some things that did slow it down considerably, and we'll talk about those a little bit later on. But I did want to run through my leveling route and also any items and stuff I use that felt helpful, and kind of just give my thoughts on the overall run as well, because you know some people were curious and, and wanted me to kind of throw it together in a video. So let's jump into my leveling route so i was a tauren and i was a druid um i think my class race combo was pretty good i don't think i'd change that honestly i would change the spec that i used later on as i was guardian for most of the run well all of the run and i would change that a little bit and we'll, we'll talk about that later on but for the most part i was pretty happy with the choice because druid feels quite versatile it has a lot in its kit that you can do to basically help you with leveling, you, you have stealth, you have good mobility, you have tankiness, you have ranged pulling ability. It just felt like a quite good overall class to play. So let's jump into the leveling route, and obviously I was a Torum, so we started off in Mulgo, and we leveled with heirlooms, um, I'll talk about my full item setup later on, but we didn't use recruiter friend, we didn't use like 300% elixirs or anything like that, just box standard stuff that you can kind of get a hold of in the game. So we leveled from level 1 to level 15 in Mulgo, doing the stuff in the camp, in the starting area, Bloodhoof Village, in this uh, camp Sungraze as well, and then it ends up taking you to Thunder Bluff, and at that point we were 15, and I queued for dungeons at this point. I did two dungeons, um, back to back pretty much, as the RNG on dungeons is quite friendly at that level, but the reason I wouldn't really recommend them past level kind of 20 is because the dungeon pool is quite large now because you can get quite old dungeons like low level ones due to the scaling changes. So yeah overall I just don't really think dungeons are that viable and there's, there's definitely some areas where I think you could do dungeons but for the most part doing like level 40 trying to do a dungeon there's just way too many different dungeons in the pool. Some quite bad ones, some ones that are too hard for like inexperienced players and it's just going to slow you down if you do end up a bit unlucky with the group. So I think questing for the most part is the way to go. Unless you're leveling in like a fourth, maybe three to four man group or preferably five man. But that's the best way you can kind of negate the, the RNG basically. Um, specific queuing for dungeons though, I would not recommend anymore. Um, I did three dungeons total, two at level 15. Well, between level 15 and level 20. And the next one was at like 44-ish and I tried the detention block. Um, if for any of you are familiar with the detention block, it used to be a very quick way of leveling. You'd queue into detention block specifically, and you'd basically just pull the first two bosses, or the, the two bosses you need, pretty much instantly. You'd cleave it all down, and you'd be done with the run within like five minutes at most. Um, it was great for experience, but they've put a lot of the experience into the random dungeon queue now, rather than the dungeon itself. And it just really isn't worth it anymore. Um, I got like maybe 5-10% of level for the run and for 5 minutes time just isn't worth the time at all. Now if you got that random queue then that would be pretty good but the chances of getting it random queue are quite slim. Um, so it's just not as good to random queue anymore. Oh sorry it's not as good to specific queue and there's too much randomness to random queue. Um, but there are certain points where I think you could do it for example the level 15 point. So, at level 20, sorry, at level 15, we did the two dungeons as I mentioned. We ended up with Wayland Caverns and Rage Fire, I think. Or maybe Dead Mines, one of the two. I think it was Dead Mines, actually. And then we went over to the Crossroads. I did all the stuff at Crossroads, the Forgotten Pools, and the Stagnant Oasis. At this point, I was level 20 ish. And I used Rocket Boots or Gun Shoes, whatever, to get me to Orgrimmar. Because for some reason, as a Tauren, you don't get a flight path to Orgrimmar. And using the toy, the um, flight path toy that you can get, that didn't give me a flight path to Orgrimma either. So my only option was to run, and luckily with gun shoes it took me two and a half minutes. 
So not that much time lost and it's worth it because when we hit level 20, we can put on war mode and I've made sure I was in a guild too. So we were able to pick up the guild banners and also the guild cloaks, giving me a little bit more mobility of being able to teleport back to Orgrimmar when I need to. Um, so it was definitely worth the travel. And in terms of war mode, I would recommend turning it on. Uh, during my leveling experience, I came across probably 20 people uh, from the enemy faction. About four of those people tried to kill me. One was successful, but I, he was only really successful because the game was broken at the time. Um, there was a really, really weird period where I just couldn't play my druid. I'd swap into bear form and I'd be a seal, and it, the game would let me cast spells for a second, and then it, it thinks I'm a seal, even though I'm, I had the bear form icon in the, the top right. And then it wouldn't let me cast spells, and it was just a really weird experience. And then the guy killed me, and the game didn't recognize I was dead. So I was just a, a 1 HP druid um, in like seal form or something stupid. Uh, so I had to close the game, reopen, get to my corpse, res, close the game again, reopen, and then the game realizes I'm alive again. And it wasted a lot of time. This was going on for about two hours. Um, so that's the main reason that guy killed me. <laughs> it's not an excuse, trust me. Um, outside of that, one other guy tried, uh, but you know, didn't put up much effort. Um, another person kind of chased me down a bit, but I just ran away from them. And then the fourth person kind of targeted me through a higher level. I just got away. I, I didn't want to take the risk and just flew out of the area. So overall, with how little effect like the, the actual PvP of War Mode had on my leveling experience, and I was streaming, so I was open to people coming and trying to kill me, and nothing like that really happened. So. For the time I saved from War Mode, and you only get 10% as Horde, um, I think it's 20% currently on Alliance EU, 15% on uh, US for Alliance. Um, I think it's still worth it, regardless of faction. And the best part is, if you are in a situation where you're being attacked and you know you're wasting time because people are just chain killing you, all you have to do is go to a rested area and you can turn it off. Um, to turn it back on, you have to go to your main faction city or Grimoire or Stormwind, but to turn it off, you just have to be somewhere rested. So I think it's 1,000% worth the, the risk, the tiny, tiny risk that it provides. And you do get the talents too, which do, for some classes and specs, give you a DPS increase also. So anyway, once we were done with Orgrimma, we teleported back to the crossroads. We ran down to Ratchet. We did all the quests at Ratchet. And then we flew to the crossroads and we ran up to the, the Morshan Rampard. Um, here we did a little bit of stuff in Ashenvale. This is where the bugs were really starting to kick in. Uh, they started around Ratchet and got a lot worse when I got into Ashenvale with the, you know, the transformation and the game not realizing I'm doing things. I'd finish a quest and the game wouldn't realize for about 15 minutes. Um, so I tried to keep my visit here short. Uh, we did do the stuff at the Rampart. We did do some stuff at Fallen Sky Lake, but that's where the guy was trying to kill me. So I just ran over to the Silverwind Refuge did all the stuff there and then I hop on the caravan that takes me to my favorite leveling zone, Stone Talon Mountains. This zone is actually broken. I tested it a little bit before I did the run and compared to most other zones that you can do at this level, it gives more experience per quest. It's about every two quests you do in Stone Talon is worth about three quests in most other zones. Compared it to like uh, Southern Barrens and things like that, uh, zones that are higher. And yeah, it was given less experience for those other zones. So Stone Talon is great for the first half at least. Uh, the Fold, uh, Krumgar Fortress, Mala Mala Malakin, Malaka even, um, the Tongue Twister, was great. Um, I did a little bit of the quest there and then just before it kind of makes you do the battle stuff with the uh, like the Blood Totem I think it is or whatever Tauren race is there, I stopped and I left the zone. You don't want to do the stuff that takes you over to this side of the zone because it just ends up being quite um, like one quest at a time and quite RP heavy. It just isn't worth the time investment. But this side of the zone, great. Great, great experience gain. Once I was done with that, I headed over to Hunter's Hill. We did the stuff there and then the stuff at the Overgrove. And at that point, I was about level 30, probably 36, eh, probably 37, 38 ish um, around that point. So then I used the cloak to go to Orgrimmar, we went over to Undercitter, and it's obviously the pre-battle Undercity if you're a low level character. I set my hearthstone at Brill, and I went over to Western Plaguelands, we leveled there for a bit, we did the stuff of the Bulwark, the stuff of Andrahal, uh, Mendes Steed, 
And at that point, I was around, you know, 41, 42-ish. Um, I then used my Hearthstone to take me back to Brill. I picked up level 40 mount speed, and then I used the flight path, because you have the heirloom flight path toy thing, to take me all the way to Light's Hope Chapel. And there, there's some goblins in the little area that you can talk to and get a rocket ride. And that rocket ride will take you all the way to Badlands. And this is quite a great zone for experience too, especially this Blood Watcher point. It's really, really quick quests. Um, great to do for experience. So we do the stuff at Fuse Light, we do the stuff at Blood Watcher Point, we did the stuff at New Kargath. I basically finished up 90% of the zone and then we left and at that point I was probably, you know, 40, 45, 46. Uh, we headed over to Syrian Gorge, we did the stuff at Thorum Advance, we did some of the stuff at Thorum Point and then we left the zone and went over to the Syrian Gorge, sorry, the Burning Steps. Uh, here we did stuff at Flamestar Post. We also did stuff at Chisel Grip and then I was done with the zone. At this point I was about level 33, 34-ish. Um, making sure as well one vital part was making sure I had like a Silver Dragon add-on to show me rare spawns that are nearby. Um, because people don't really kill them too much, especially the ones not on the, you know, the normal track. If you have to go off a little bit and to pick grab them, it's worth it. If they're too far away, like if you're traveling you know, miles and miles to get one rare, it's not worth it. But if, if it's close by, just a little bit hidden, then definitely take a look, see if the rare's up. But one thing I would definitely recommend is keep an eye on treasure chests. Treasure chests give about a quest worth of experience, and I grabbed quite a few while leveling. Uh, you mainly find them in humanoid type, like little areas, like establishments. Um, and it'll just be a chest you can click on, you'll get some garbage loot. But the main thing is the experience you'll get from it. So definitely keep an eye out for treasure chests. They have a, a few different kind of variation to the look. Um, but just look out for them. You're going to get some good experience from picking those up. So don't miss those if you can. There's, unfortunately, there's no real add-on that can help you find them. You're just going to have to keep your eyes open. Um, once we were done with burning steps, we were around... I'd say about 56... Uh, sorry, no, we're about 30, uh, 53, 54-ish. 50, God, English hard. 53, 54-ish. Uh, and then we went all the way over to the end of the zone. And right here-ish, there's a little goblin again that will give you a rocket ride all the way to Swamp of Sorrows. And you'll end up in Bog Paddle. All the quests in Bog Paddle. Picked up quite a few rares in this zone because people don't really touch them. And we did the stuff at Sorrow Merc. We did the stuff over in this kind of salfish look like camp over here somewhere um, and then that sends you to the temple of Atalhaka did all the stuff there then we ended up at Stonard did all the stuff there and mistakenly I went over to Splinter Spear Junction and did the stuff there I wouldn't recommend it it wasn't very time efficient wouldn't do that again everything else in that zone felt great um, up until that point and I normally didn't do Splinter Spear Junction but I kind of wanted to get as much experience out of the zone as I could and made the mistake of doing it so, wouldn't recommend it. Everything else on this side of the zone, though, it's great. Um, and then we added into Blasted Lands, and we didn't have to do too much in Blasted Lands. We were just trying to get to level 58. So, we did the stuff at um, Acrylion. Or Acrylon. Um, takes you into, like, the mines. Did all the stuff in the mines. And then, at that point, I was pretty much 58. Um, you might have to do a little bit more with, like, the Ogres and the um, Demon Hunter guy. But you should be around 58 at that point. And at that point, I tried something a little bit different from what I would normally do. And I went straight to Northrend, skipping um, basically Outland. I wouldn't recommend it, honestly. It didn't feel that great. Now, Borean Tundra was great for experience with the stuff in Warsung Hole, with the stuff in Amber Ledge, stuff in Kuldara, uh, a little bit of the stuff in like the Death Stand area. But pass oh and the stuff down here as well with like the um the the Warus people, I can't remember the name of them. Um we did the stuff there and then I left the zone. At that point I was I got a good few levels. I think I got like six or seven levels from Dark Barian Tundra. It was quite a lot. We went to Dragon Blight, we did all the stuff at Agrimar's Hammer. Um great quest there. There's, you know, you get like ten quests to hand in from Agrimar's Hunter. We also did the little quest at West Wind Refuge as well when we entered the zone. We did a little bit of the stuff over at Wormrest and then we leave the zone. I don't really like Venom Spite, so I tend to not do it. We went into Grizzly Hills and we did the first chunk of the zone. 
uh, mainly the stuff around Conquest Hold. Uh, we don't venture too uh, far past that, and I was getting a little bit irritated with being in Northrend at this point, and I was also tired, so I was more grumpy than I would normally be. So it was really kind of affecting my mental. Um, as a, um, I don't know if I mentioned actually, but I, I only got about two hours sleep for the preparation of this. I'd normally get a good, you know, eight hours sleep, but I just could not sleep, and it really impacted my leveling speed because I was having micro naps. If you're not familiar with those, you basically fall asleep for like. A second like it's like a prolonged blink but it's really frustrating and really kills focus and um, I was getting those at about 20 hours in when normally would they would be hitting about 30 late 30s 40 hours in and um, so getting those so early in really really killed my ability to level I was feeling really tired and kind of grumpy due to the lack of sleep and as I said it wasn't normally due to like if I get eight hours sleep 20 hours is fine you know we've all done those 24 hour mar gaming marathons or whatever but just because I got so little sleep, it was really, really impacting my, my ability to focus. So anyway, I got grumpy in Grizzly Hills. I moved on to Zuldrak a little bit earlier than I wanted to. We did the stuff at Light's Breach. We did a little bit of the stuff at Argent Stand. We did the um, Ring of Blood, basically. Got someone to help me with that, just because it's a pain to find people of current level to do it with. And it's nice and quick experience if you can get someone to quickly come and help you with that. And past that, I then went to... Dalaran, we got Epic Flying a while ago too from Borean Tundra, and in Dalaran on the little like landing dock thing, there's a, a guy you can speak to that will teleport you to Sholazar Basin, and Sholazar Basin's a great zone as always, like there's good good quests, it's mostly just kill quests, great zone to level in, uh, obviously all the stuff at Nessin uh, and we, we basically carried on quests, and at that point, when I was done with this zone, I was probably about... I'd say about 68, um, I'd say around 68, no, 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 it would have been 78, I would have made about 78 at this point when we were done. If I was to do this again, I would probably instead start off going from Blasted Land straight to Hellfire. Now the reason I wanted to avoid Hellfire is because BC questing is kind of rough, there's a lot of bad RNG quests. Uh, especially straight off with like the orcs and the blood. Uh, you can get quite unlucky and it can take quite a bit of time. But I'd honestly do quite a bit of Hellfire because there are some good quest density in Hellfire. Um, and then I'd probably do Nagrand and get probably like 10 levels from both of those zones-ish. Maybe, you know, 6 to 8. Um, I don't know, I'd have to do it and see how well it scales. But we'll say between 6 and 10 levels. Doesn't really matter as long as it's a minimum of 6. And then I'd go to Northrend and I'd do a very similar path, you know, Baryon, Dragon Blight, a little bit of Grizzler, a little bit of Zul'Drak, because this area here, this Light's Breach, is great. It's like 10 quests, very quickly done. Uh, and then I'd do Sholazar, and then we'd be level 8 to. Ended up coming out of Sholazar with my Northrend only route, a little bit short, and I had to go to Ice Crown for the final two levels, which wasn't very efficient. Um, so I wasn't a fan of that. It actually took me to like the Shadow Vault stuff as well because I needed so many levels. I think I might have even needed three levels. I can't quite remember. We needed quite a big chunk anyway. So definitely would get more experience from uh, TBC before I moved to Northrend. Wouldn't really personally recommend a Northrend only route. But there might be ways you can make it work. Although like I don't really like Howling Forge. I don't like most of the stuff in Dragon Blight on the right side. Not really a fan of Storm Peaks because it is quite a lot of like movement flying around. Um, so I just couldn't see how I could make that any better. But anyway, that would be my personal opinion on that side of the leveling. And once we were 8 10, we went over to Mount Hygel. We did pretty much everything in Mount Hygel. And then we went over to Jade Forest. And we did you know everything we needed to do in Jade Forest until we hit level 90. We didn't have to do that much actually. I think I'd left Mount Hygel about level... 86, 87 ish. So, didn't have to do that much at all. We got to like the monkey village and I was done. Um, both great zones for leveling, really, really good, especially when you get to Jade Forest because you have the, the few treasures you can pick up too, which give about you know, two quests worth of experience. So, definitely grab those along the way. They, they basically lead you to them while you're questing. There's three of them. So, grab those along your way as well. Uh, for Horde, anyway. I think for Alliance, you don't really come across them as easily. Horde favoritism at it again. 
Um, and then we were level 90, and at that point, obviously, we had to Warlord of Draenor. I did the intro stuff for Warlord of Draenor. I'm not too sure if I would skip it next time, because you can skip it with either a mage giving you a teleport, or you can go to the Timeless Isle, and there's like a weird cave near this boat that you can kind of click on some chairs and click on a fire, and it'll teleport you to Golgrond. Not too sure if I'd skip the intro stuff. It takes a bit of time, but it isn't that bad. But either way... After we were done with Mop, we headed into Frostfire. We did the stuff to set up the garrison. We did the stuff where you take over Bladespire. And once we were done with those quests, I started doing treasures and bonus objectives. Pretty much cleared out all the bonuses and treasures on the map. Um, obviously not getting the ones that are too out of the way or too like through like a, a cleave that takes like five minutes. Just got in the, the, getting the easy ones that don't take too long. Great thing about Druid at this point is you can just fly down, grab the treasure, fly off. You know, there's no dismounting or anything like that, which gives Druid a huge advantage for this kind of thing. Then we headed over to Golgrond, and we basically did all the treasures and bonuses again. Um, I was going to try and kill, like, the big named mobs, but I didn't need to. Didn't need to at all. So, that's all we had to do there was treasures and bonuses. Once we were done with that, I was level 100, and I actually went to Tanan Jungle, and we grabbed all the treasures in Tanan Jungle, and that got me to level 101. The, reckon, uh, the reason I did this is because I had some BOE gear in my bags, like the legendary and stuff that was going to help me my leveling DPS increase. Um, because level 100 is kind of rough. Um, you don't scale too well, but when you hit 101, you get a huge power spike. So I was able to get from 100 to 101 without really killing anything. Um, and it was very quick. It was like a 15 minute level due to the treasures, giving quite good experience. So, definitely would recommend doing the 101 in Tanan. I thought it was great. Uh, obviously, Druid is much better at that, so it might be a bit slower depending on what class you are. Especially because there's quite scary mobs there that will kill you very quickly. So, if you're not very good at kind of getting away from mobs, then it might not be worth it for you to do this. But if you are something, you know, that can jump in, grab the stuff, jump out, then yeah, it's probably great. Um, so, with 101, we had then headed into uh, Legion. Did the class stuff to get the artifact and be able to pick a zone. We did Azuna and we did Falshara. And at that point, I was 110. Um, so the, the journey was nearly over. Uh, we did pretty much all of Azuna and all of Falshara. And that got me to 110. So obviously with heirlooms and stuff, it's great, great experience. Uh, you could probably pick the zones that you want to do that you're more comfortable with. I just really like Azuna and Falshara. They just feel the quickest to me. And they gave me enough experience to get to 110, so I only have to do two zones. So that felt great. Uh, at 110, obviously, we're heading to BFA. And at that point, you know, there's not really too much craziness to do. You just, I did the Zuldazar, I did Nazmir, and then I did Vuldun. I got myself to 119 and about 20, 30% in. Um, and then I did the war, um, what was it called? The war, like the war missions, um... But it has a specific name. The the stuff you do on the boat anyway. I can't think of the specific name for them right now. But like the, the, the war campaign. There we go. Did the war campaign stuff. And we were done. We got ourselves to 120 in 33 hours. So I reckon with a bit more sleep. First of all. Um, and with a bit better pathing. Especially with the outland stuff. I reckon I could chunk down the hours to about 29. Um, especially if I had the heirloom rings as well, I think that would chunk it down to about 27-ish because I don't have any of the heirloom rings. I've just been really unlucky with those. Um, so that would be 10% experience gain. If I was Alliance at the time, that would have been 30% from war mode. So that would be another you know 20% off my leveling experience. Um, but I was Horde, so I only got 10%. So I, I think this could could have been done in a much, much quicker speed, like 25-ish hours. Um, but obviously we just had a few roadblocks, and as I mentioned, that big leveling issue that I had in um, Ashenvale and stuff really, really killed a good couple of hours for me. So if we didn't have those bugs, we changed the route a little bit, as I talked about with the outland stuff, and I got a good amount of sleep. I reckon this could be done in easily sub-30 hours, um, which isn't too bad for leveling a new character. So, that is my leveling route, um, 
yeah, that, that took a good chunk of time to go through, but hopefully that bit helps you out. Obviously, if you're Alliance, you're going to have to change up some of the zones and things like that. But for the most part, that should give you a good idea of what to aim for, at least, if you're unsure where to begin. In terms of items, if you have gold to spare, there are a couple of items I would definitely recommend. I over-prepared for this way too hard. Um, but some of the things I would recommend is, first of all, a legendary for a level 101. Really, really, really big. Um, it basically gives you a huge power spike. If you can get like the leather boots, you can throw in an experience gem in those too. So you're going to be getting that 5% ex uh, extra experience. Very worthwhile. If not, there is a currency you can get from Legion on you know one of your other characters, this Essence. And you can use that essence to buy a legendary. It'll be a random class legendary, so it might not have a socket on it. But either way, it'll still be a big power spike for your character. Um, and you can check your characters too. You might have a thousand essence lying around that you can buy one on. I know I do. Um, so definitely would recommend a legendary if you have gold to spare or essence to spare or a little bit of time to spare to get the essence. Uh, I would recommend trying to join a guild that you know has the guild banners. As they don't make a huge difference, but you can make a macro, so you're throwing them down, off cooldown basically, and you get 5% from the green one, 10% from the blue one, and 15% from the purple one. Now these only affect um, mob kills, they don't affect quests or anything like that, but you kill a lot of mobs, so gaining a little bit of experience here and there for no extra work is quite nice. Obviously I would recommend turning on war mode as we discussed earlier. And I would also recommend getting the um, new potions that have been added in 8.1. Those are something else I was using. You basically do the assaults, like the faction assaults. Where was... Ah, here we go. So yeah, there's an assault going on right now. You pop in, you do all these, and you get these tokens from it. Um, and those tokens can be used at your, like, near your warfront people. Uh, there'll be a vendor there that you can buy a potion that gives 5% experience and 10 stats for an hour. Uh, it's bind on account, so you can send it to alts. And get a few of those, you know, those are really going to be helping your leveling experience. I would, would definitely recommend getting some of those. They really don't take much time to get. But from doing a few of those assaults, you'll probably have enough for a good 10 or so hours. So, you know, it's, it's going to help out. And you're probably doing them anyway for the AP and stuff, so you have, probably have a bunch of those tokens lying around that you, you're not spending. You might be saving from mount or something, but you have to ask, is the mount worth it? Or is saving some time on leveling worth it? You know, weigh it up, see what's more while, uh, value for you. Um, a bunch of this other stuff in my bags is useless garbage, though, like the prolonged powers. I wouldn't recommend. Flasks, it's a luxury. Um, some of the gear I bought, you know, helped out a little bit, but wasn't that crazy. I basically had a bunch of, like, the crafted gear for 111. And some stuff for 101 as well, just to give me a bit more of a power spike. But that stuff made small, small differences. Because you're picking up gear that replaces it fairly quickly anyway. And you have heirlooms from 1 to 110 anyway. So, you know, you're not going to be gaining that much from those. Uh, the 111 stuff helped a decent amount. Just because my character was quite undergeared. But it's still gear that gets replaced fairly quickly by questing anyway. You're just going to struggle a little bit in the beginning. And then once you get some gear on the go, you're perfectly fine. Um, the things I would recommend is three items. And it's these three right here. Gun shoes. These are great for low level. Because they allow you, it allows you to basically get from one area to another very, very quickly. You can't hit mobs while using the gun shoes, but you can be hit. So you can fly through areas as long as you're outdoors. You can fly by. It's faster than fo level 40 mount speed. So you're really going to be zooming around pre, you know, flying mount. Um, they are kind of expensive, but they really do help. I would absolutely recommend it if you have disposable gold. Fried. This is a dark horse. This was huge, especially being Guardian Druid. Um, it allowed me to pull a bunch of mobs together, dot them up with Moonfire, you know, get a Thrash on the go, and then throw down a Fried. And this does a lot of damage. Early on, it was doing like 70-80% of a mob's HP. And later on in the run, it was doing like 30%. So it's a, a good chunk of damage. Uh, they're not that expensive, so I would definitely recommend stocking up on these. And I was using these that much that I didn't even bother with the agility potions and all this other garbage I bought. So yes, would recommend these. The lusts were nice, but it never really felt like it made that big of a difference. Um, but the other thing I would recommend is the Goblin Glider Kit. There's just a bunch of points where you can fly off things and get some ground and, you know, get to other places easier. 
So those are the three items I would definitely recommend if you've got some gold to burn on leveling a character quicker. Um, everything else is a luxury, obviously try and get a 5% experience gem in your gear somewhere. Um, if you don't get a legendary of one, then you can buy a 111 ring off the auction house, which will have a guaranteed socket in it for about 800 gold. You can buy the gem itself for like 50 gold. So for a thousand gold for 5% experience gain, I think that's pretty worthwhile. So that was all of that stuff. Um, and overall, as I mentioned, you know, I wasn't quite happy with the run speed. The class I was pretty okay with. The only thing I would change is I think at about level 107, very specific, but around there, uh, Bear Druid just started to feel like it fell off quite hard. From 1 to 110, sorry, 1 to 100, uh, 100, um, it felt good. You know, I could pull a bunch of mobs, I was killing them at a pretty good space, uh, pace, even with the fried bombs, you know. Even if I didn't have those, it would have been still pretty good. Um, but yeah, the, the pace started to really slow down when I hit Legion. So I'd say around level 105 onwards, I would probably look to switch to Boomkin instead. And instead run down the route of, you know, dotting things up, grouping it up and AOEing it down that way. As it's probably quicker than trying to do there at that point. Uh, especially when I hit BFA. It really slowed down. It wasn't too bad on the smaller mobs that you could group together and kill. But on the large mobs that, you know, have a good chunk of HP, like the named mobs, it was brutal. It took me so long to kill them. So a Boomkin wouldn't have as much trouble with that because their single target damage is way better than a, a Guardian Druid's. Um, so, but from level 1 to 100, I was perfectly happy with running Guardian. Didn't feel like a problem at all because I could pull a bunch of mobs. They do pretty much zero damage to me. I was happy days. Um, and obviously I mentioned before the Guardian Druid or just Druid in general utility, getting fly mount at level 58, a little bit earlier than most things, being able to fly around and loot things without being, being dismounted, having a stealth, having movement speed increases, being able to pull from ranged as a melee, and um, having a damage over time, like those things just were really, really good for leveling. So definitely would recommend if you're looking to level something new and you are curious, try and Druid. Yep, great, great pick. Would definitely do Guardian for most of it too. Um, I did mention also about dungeons and there was a couple of points where I felt like dungeons could be viable. As I said, level 15 to about level 20-ish, I think dungeons are quite good. And then again, I wouldn't do dungeons maybe until BC and you queue specifically for BC dungeons and get the first, you know, two or three out of the way. Um, and then, because you, you're going to have the quests and stuff too, and then maybe again for the Wrath of the Lich King ones, the first couple of those, and then past that, I don't know. I didn't really, I haven't heard good things about like Mr. Pandaria and Kata Dungeons, especially Kata, I probably would not even try Kata Dungeons. Mr. Pandaria Dungeons could be worthwhile, because there's definitely been a lot of points in the past where like Jade Temple and um, Storm Style were pretty good experience for the time. So Mr. Pandaria could be another point where it's worth doing a couple of dungeons. Um, past that, I wouldn't do it anymore. Definitely not in like Legion and BFA and stuff. Just not really worth the time at that point. So that is pretty much everything. It's been quite a long video. So if you've stuck with me to the end, then thank you for, for hanging out. And hopefully this video gave you some insight into the rune. Um, why it took me so long like well 33 hours isn't long but it isn't what i wanted i wanted th sub 30 hours at least um but i think with the issues we had with the two hour bugs the lack of sleep and also you know not having heirloom rings and things like that like little things and also my route with no friend those things combined definitely killed a lot of the time I think if i did this again which i probably will in the near future maybe in a month or so then I reckon we can definitely get sub 30 hours. And when heirlooms come in, in 8.1.5, I think, or 8.2, um, oh, you're going to be zooming. It's going to be very, very quick to level. So thanks for watching, guys. Look out for more videos coming soon. See ya.